Hi everyone, I hope you're doing great. So around a year ago, I made a series of videos featuring some of the best methods and software that can be used to enhance and upscale video footage to a higher resolution. I noticed many of you found this type of videos pretty useful. So here I am today back with another footage recovery video. This time we will be talking about how you can reduce noise from video footage, which usually occurs when shooting in low light conditions. I have a total of three methods to compare today. Hopefully by the end of this, we will be able to tell which method is the best in terms of output quality and processing speed. In this experiment, I will be using this noisy 15 seconds clip. Now, before I start, I think it's important to share what kind of hardware I'm using. So I'll put that up on the screen. Despite the fact that the result I'm getting will differ from the ones you will get if you decide to run the same experiment on your computer, this is still a fair comparison since I'll be using the same resources and applying the same output settings to all three methods. The first method I'm gonna be trying is using a Red Giant plugin called Denoiser 3. The developers claim that their plugin offers the fastest and most reliable video denoising experience. So let's see if that's true. The Denoiser plugin is supported by several editing applications. I already have the Premiere Pro version installed on my device. So let's simply import the noisy clip over, create a new sequence and with the clip selected, navigate to the effects panel and simply apply the denoiser effect on your clip. The default settings aren't really making that big of a difference as you can see. Now keep in mind that each of the following methods uses a different denoising algorithm and properties, so there isn't really a perfect way to apply the same settings across all methods, but I think I can still use my own judgment here when playing with the settings. My aim here is to find the sweet spot where I have as less noise as possible without blurring out the image. I think I can take the noise reduction all the way up to 100 here. What I can say for sure is that the Denoiser plugin will definitely slow your preview down in Premiere Pro. This will vary depending on your hardware, but let's see how fast the actual export will take. So with the sequence selected, press Ctrl and M on your keyboard to pull up the export settings. I just want to make sure that I match these settings to the properties of the original clip for the sake of the experiment. I prefer to send this over to Media Encoder, so I'm gonna click on Q and then simply start rendering. I did monitor the way the hardware was being used during the encoding and this is what it looks like. Now for the first method, the rendering time was around 1 minute and 42 seconds. I know the result looks good enough, but let's see if the next methods will perform any better. So jumping over to another third party plugin that works with Premiere Pro neat video which has reportedly been greatly improved in the latest versions now the great advantage of neat video is that it can be used to enhance videos that are also suffering from defects other than noise such as dust and scratches and much more so i would say if it does end up performing well with denoising today then getting neat video would be a great deal i've already installed neat video on my premiere pro so let's add it to the same clip First you need to click on prepare, then build. I know at a first glance it looks a bit overwhelming but it actually is way simpler than it seems. I'm not gonna complicate the settings or go too much into details here but if you'd like to learn more about Neat Video make sure you check their channel on YouTube as they have a bunch of video tutorials that guides you through how to properly use their plugin. So the first thing we need to do here is click on auto profile to generate a sampling area. The key here is to make sure that the selected area doesn't show many details, that is large enough and contain clearly visible noise, which can also be checked with the help of the noise level indicator here. We can go over to adjust and preview to have a look at our denoised version. We can increase the radius to give the filter more data to work with. But bear in mind that this will result in using more resources. I'm gonna leave this at 3. We also have the play button on top here, which we can use to preview more frames so we can have an idea of how much noise has been reduced. You can also use the spatial tab and reduce even more noise from there. We can push this a bit higher. Just make sure that the image doesn't look over processed or blurry. Let's have a look at the difference. I think this is the right combination here. I don't want to overdo it. So let's click on apply. And similar to the denoise filter, neat video does seem to require so many resources for live preview. 
but I care more about rendering time. So let's send this over to Media Encoder and start processing. What's interesting here is that the processing time was the exact same as the previous method, 1 minute and 42 seconds. But we still need to see whether the output quality is better. So bear with me here and we will get to that in a minute. Moving on to the third method, this time we're gonna use a completely different software that is dedicated entirely to video enhancement. The program is called Video Enhance AI from Topaz Labs. I've used this before in previous tutorials to upscale videos to 4K. The results were truly impressive. Video Enhance AI can also be used to reduce visual artifacts, restore old footage, increase video frame rates, as well as noise reduction. And that's exactly how we're gonna be using it today. So after loading the video, switch to the side-by-side -side view. I'd say my video's quality is medium and let's set the video artifact type to noise. I'm not really looking to upscale the video here. So let's change the output size from 4K to 100% denoise and deblock. You can always click on preview to demo the results. You can already tell that Video Enhance is really good at denoising, but let's see how long the process takes and how it compares to the Premiere Pro plugins. So let's stop the preview. By default, the exported video is saved right next to the original file, but you can always customize your output preferences and choose a different path manually. I'll add a suffix here so I can differentiate the files. And all that's left to do here is start processing. Again, if you're interested in knowing more about the resources being used, here's what it looks like during the process. Video Enhance took me around 14 minutes to process the video, which is remarkably higher than the first two methods. So I guess the question that remains here is whether it's worth that much time. And now that we compare the speed of each method, let's get to the most important part of all this, video quality and details. So let's go through these methods one by one. The first one using Denoiser 3 from Red Giant isn't bad at all, as you can see. The noise has been greatly reduced. However, my first impression here is that there's still a bit of noise present in the background as well as some sort of compression artifacts. Not sure if I could have adjusted the settings to reduce more noise here, as I believe it would have affected the sharpness even more, especially that it seems like we've lost some details around the fur here and few other areas. Now moving on to the second method in which we used neat video, the background looks much cleaner and smoother. Details have been well preserved on the foreground as well. I honestly think this looks much much better, especially since compression artifacts are way harder to notice here and the image quality looks really good overall. Now moving over to the third method in which we used Video Enhance AI and as expected from this specialized software, the result is really impressive. When it comes to noise reduction, I don't really see that big of a difference compared to neat video. However, I've noticed that much more details have been preserved on the subject, even more visibly around the foreground at the end of the clip here, as you can see with the branches on the ground, which look much sharper and natural than the previous methods. Now keep in mind that neat video comes with more advanced denoising settings than Video Enhance, which gives us more flexibility and control. On the other hand, Video Enhance comes with many more features that can be used to enhance bad videos even further, which I think makes it a really good deal for those who wish to frequently use those features. So to sum it up, all three methods do deliver pretty impressive results. I tried to execute this comparison in the fairest way possible. I'll leave the choice up to you guys. I expect the results to be slightly different depending on the footage you use. For me personally, I think Neat Video and Video Enhanced AI provide much better results than Red Giant's Denoiser. I would probably go with Neat Video when time is a factor. Video Enhanced still takes much more time to process, but I honestly think that the other enhancement features that it comes with makes it a slightly better deal. But again, that's my personal opinion. Let me know which one of these methods you guys think is best. Or if you know about a different denoising tool that you think is more powerful, don't hesitate to drop it in the comments below and I'll make sure to have a look at it. In the end, I hope you guys found value in this tutorial. 
If that was the case, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one in the future. Stay creative and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Get it.